Welcome to Love and Abuse, the show about navigating the difficult relationship. From simple disagreements to emotionally abusive behaviors, you deserve respect and kindness. All the information on this show is meant for educational purposes only. Always seek a professional for your mental health and well-being, and always pick your battles wisely. I'm your host, Paul Coliani. Welcome to another episode of Love and Abuse. If this is your first time, welcome to the show. I am here to help you navigate difficult relationships and try to clear up the confusion. And one of the common messages that I receive is about confusion. They ask, am I the abusive one? Are they the abusive one? I'm so confused. I don't know. So they send me these messages asking me to help them determine who's the abusive one. And I've actually created episodes on that. In fact, I'll tell you what they are. They are called, one of them is, am I the emotionally abusive one? What are the signs of an emotionally abusive person? Another one that might be helpful is what is emotional abuse? How do I know when it's time to leave and other important questions? That's the entire episode title. And another long title, emotional abuse explained for your friends, family, attorney, therapist, or anyone else that may need to know what you're experiencing. I know it's a long title, but it is uh, definitely recommended if you're trying to determine what behaviors make up emotional abuse. And it can be very helpful to know those behaviors just to assess them yourself, try to figure out if you're the one doing it or they're the one doing it or what have you. And uh, today's episode, I'm going to give you my thought process when I start reading someone's message and how I can tell almost immediately that they are a victim of emotional abuse or control or manipulation, any type of hurtful behavior. I can tell almost immediately, and it doesn't mean I'm right 100% of the time, but there are a lot of common phrases and a lot of common words that uh, the, the recipient of hurtful behavior will say. They'll write it in their message to me. And as soon as I see these words, my thought goes to the, the belief that they are probably experiencing emotional abuse, especially when they ask the question, am I the abuser? Am I the one doing all this stuff? And maybe I'm the one that's wrong. And maybe I need to work on that in myself. Like I said, I've talked about this before in other episodes, but I think it's important to bring it up again because I still get messages asking that question. And maybe they didn't listen to that episode. And if that's the case, I understand why they might still have a question on it. But either way, I think it's important to bring it up again because it is something that comes up a lot. And in order to do this, I, I picked out an email from my, my massive collection of emails that I received over the years. And I've gone through and highlighted each of the wordings of the phrases that I see a lot that give away that this person is very likely experiencing emotionally abusive behavior. And again, I've gone through and highlighted all the words, all the phrases that reveal to me that they are in an emotionally abusive relationship and they can answer that question themselves. And this will help you. And in fact, you may want to write a letter to your best friend and you don't have to send it. You just pretend you're writing a letter to your best friend or somebody that you trust and um, explain what's going on in a relationship of yours that is difficult. Explain what's happening. And as you explain it, you'll find yourself maybe using some of these phrases. And more times than not, 90 plus percent of the time, maybe 99% of the time, when you use a lot of these phrases, you're probably experiencing emotionally abusive behavior from somebody else. So it might be a, a good test to write the letter first. You know, this is just a a letter that you're not really going to, going to send, but act as if you're writing it to send to somebody to say, hey, this is what's going on in my relationship. And uh, I just wanted to explain it to you and get your thoughts on it. And so you write down all that stuff. And then you can listen to this episode. And as I read these phrases or wordings, you're going to be able to tell if that's how you wrote too. So you may want to do that before you listen or just listen and see if you can resonate with what I'm talking about. So let's get into them. These are the phrases that I've highlighted. Here we go. I'm not going to read you the entire email. I'm just going to read you the phrases because this is what gives it away for me. 
So let me tell you what I've highlighted in this message. The first thing is I was confused. Next is when he discarded me. I'm just going to go through these. He never said he was sorry. He never owned it. Never took accountability. I was devastated, but I wanted us to try. He would justify and defend himself. He would even tell me he did it because of the way I treated him. You don't know the context, I understand. But these are just the phrases that I see that stand out to me. Next one is, kept explaining it with how horrible I was and how horrible our relationship was. Never ever taking accountability, saying he was sorry. Uh, I felt like he betrayed me and cheated on me and stuck knives deep into my body with his words. It hurt so badly. I got so confused. It was psychological terror. I went into freeze mode and shut down. He told me I couldn't be angry, sad, jealous, or anxious because he couldn't deal with that. Now I'm all confused again. Was I abusive to him? I felt forced to listen. She said that again. Maybe he was right and I was the abusive one after all. He was a stonewaller and extremely neglectful. Oh my God, this gets confusing. So I really tore that email apart and just picked out the phrases and the wording that highlight to me what this person is going through. And I don't know if you've counted, but I think I counted three or four times where they said confused, confusing. And that is almost always in every message I get where somebody asks the question, am I the abuser? Am I the one that's doing all this hurtful stuff? They often say, I'm just confused. I feel crazy. I'm pulling my hair out. That is a very common comment from someone who's in an abusive relationship. They are saying things like, I don't know what's real. I'm confused. Maybe it's me. Everything I read here, all these phrases, if you resonate with them, then you are very likely in some sort of hurtful, controlling, manipulative, or emotionally abusive relationship. And if you do resonate with these, then again, listen to that episode, Am I the Emotionally Abusive One? You can go to loveandabuse.com and find it there or on your podcast player. But you want to answer that question. It, it can be helpful to clear yourself of this if you've discovered that it's very difficult to convey something to somebody you care about and you're experiencing all these thoughts and feelings that this person's thinking and feeling. So it can be very helpful for you to kind of clear that up in your mind to figure it out. Because here's the big picture. The big picture I get from all these phrases, all these comments, all these words, is that A, this person wants to try to work on the relationship. B, they are questioning their own behaviors. C, they're confused. They can't figure out what's going on or what they're doing wrong. And D, they are willing to apologize. They are willing to take responsibility. And the other person doesn't want to do that. The other person doesn't want to apologize, doesn't want to own up to anything, doesn't want to take responsibility. Those are the four things that I see when someone is a victim of emotional abuse but thinks they are the abuser. They think they are the perpetrator of hurtful behavior. But every time I get a message like this and I see these words and I see the repetition of these words, some of them like confused and confusing, and asking the question, was I abusive? Am I, am I the abusive one? The abusive one typically doesn't say, am I the abusive one? Because that requires self-reflection. That requires them to focus on themselves. The abusive one typically doesn't like to focus on themselves or won't focus on themselves and reflect on that kind of stuff. They're focused on the person they're hurting. They're focused on what that person is doing wrong or not doing right or not doing enough of, all the focus is on that person. Maybe that's you. All the focus is on you for you to change to make them happy or to make them comfortable or to be under their control because they want to control you. 
one thing that she said was, uh, I wanted us to try. Maybe I could call that E, A, B, C, D, E. When somebody wants to try, when you want to try to work on the relationship and work on it together and figure things out, the abusive person usually doesn't think that way. They, they don't think like, I want to work on this relationship and try to figure things out. Let's figure this out. They don't think that way. They don't talk that way. They'll typically say things like, no, you're the problem. You have to fix your problem so that we can be happy. Again, their focus is on you. It's not on us. It's not on me. It's on you. And if they believe they're right, if they believe you're the problem, they're not going to take responsibility. They're not going to own up to anything. They're going to look at you and wait for you to change for them, regardless of how you feel about it. And that's not a very equal partnership or relationship. Both people should take responsibility for the relationship. They both put in the effort into the relationship. If you want to know the formula for a healthy relationship, it's when both people are working on it. The unhealthy relationship is, is very one-sided. It feels one-sided. It feels like only one person wants to work on it, and the other person just points the finger and says, it's all you, not me. It's a short episode today. I just wanted to share this with you just in case it is something that you're going through or you're, or you're trying to figure out exactly what's going on in your relationship, and uh, I hope this helps. Share this with others that might benefit. Love and Abuse is the official podcast of The Mean Workbook an assessment and healing guide for difficult relationships. The workbook gives you your mean score, which tells you the exact behaviors causing you to leave so many interactions feeling bad. Now you can pinpoint the specific unhealthy and even toxic behaviors in your relationship to help you take the next best steps for you and those you care about. Visit loveandabuse.com for more information. And if you've discovered that you are doing the hurtful behaviors to someone you care about and you'd like to change that about yourself, Sign up for the Healed Being program over at healedbeing.com. The course comes with a private online group where I and others will give you direct support. You'd be amazed how good it feels when you're able to stop making those you love feel bad. That's healedbeing.com. And if you're looking for a safer way to listen to this show where all the titles to the episodes are changed, click on the safe listening button on the podcast page over at loveandabuse.com. This show exists to remind you that you are not alone and you're not going crazy. You deserve to be treated with respect and kindness. You deserve honesty and sincerity. You deserve to be treated as worthy and significant. Because you are. We'll talk again soon. Mm -hmm.